breakfast puppies? This podcast contains adult language and content and is meant for mature audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the Glitter Boys! And then he poured the liquid sapphire into the sword hilt, and he found it very hard to hold as the sword inflamed him, twitching the hair off his elfin ears as he stood on the headlands. I, I, I don't know what's going on in the, in the picture of this. I know I like it, but I don't know what's going on. Well, what we have here is the cover <laughs> of Palladium Fantasy Book 6, Island at the Edge of the World. And there's a fella there holding forth a crystal sword, followed by a lady with a pair of knives. No, wait, and... wait, wait. On, on fire, crystal sword. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or it's, yeah. it's either on... Uh, are those flames or is it just I like... I think those are flames. Glowiness. Either way, like... Crystal is not great for cutting things. Well, you know, we'll get to that because there's a lot of crystal in this book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is. And so, if you, and then we've got this third guy in the back who's like, "The fuck, dude!" <laughs> Look at his. Really? Because huh? I, I thought I thought he was like kind of like nice ass bro. That's <laughs> what I was thinking. Uh, like you know, he got the eye line that, going in that direction. His, the eye line's going up towards the sword. Yeah. You think? Yeah. Okay. So these, unfortunately, are posed adventurers. Unlike yeah. the previous books that we looked through with all of the awesome Larry McDougal art, this cover is clearly, I mean, it's three heroes brandishing weapons. It, they're not I, really... I expect to open this and see something about Thacko is, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But, 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 but content aside, this is an awesome painting. This yes. is fantastic. It takes me back to the Dragon Lance era of covers. You Agreed. Know? Yeah. Very much. Okay, so speaking of art, I have a side story here, which I'm okay. going to show you in the camera, which our listeners will have to picture in their minds. Theater so. of the mind. Oh, oh, hey, did you color that? No, I got this years ago. This is the, the first copy of this book I've ever uh -huh. had. And I got it when I was still in, like, middle school. My cousin acquired this book and colored every single picture. Blind drawing? Every, every <laughs> single one is colored. That's kind of cool. In, yeah. Like, I bet you were annoyed at the time, but it's kind of cool now. Yeah. Like, like every single one. Oh, wow. He really did? <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, he colored them in. And, uh, oh, like... <laughs> this bad guy oh wow back. yeah anyway <laughs> uh and you can tell that this is old school palladium because i've got a peeled cover yep i was noticing that across yeah. it yeah okay i i gotta ask you a serious question show me the picture on page four i want to see what he did uh -oh. with the with the dwarfy guy and the spilled beer and the coins <laughs> there you go you know, it's his work's not bad. I, I just gotta bad. say, yep, yeah, he's, it's okay. He stayed within the lines, so yeah. There so, you go. uh, thank you for listening to us about the book. Now, on to the uh, the uh, Glitter Boys coloring contest, which we will be. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I think is there a Palladium coloring book? If not, there needs to be one. Ooh, I'm like, I think honestly, I think most. I think your cousin may have had the right idea. Like most Palladium books are color Colorable. books. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Island of the Edge of the World. This book is Palladium's first full-length campaign. And yeah. it's it's fucking epic. <laughs> yeah, it's what, 120-some-odd and, and pages? Yeah, 144 pages, and it goes to the end of the fucking world. Like, it's... This is an apocalyptic campaign that starts very low level, and you can run a lifetime of adventures mm. with this book. And allow me to say real fast, just in case we were unclear about it, when we were saying Palladium in this, we were talking this is a Palladium fantasy, not Palladium everything else. Yep, this is Palladium fantasy first edition. 
So there is a lot in this. I went through this last night and refreshed myself. There are, it, it, it really bases on a couple of themes. Changelings are one yeah. of them. Yeah. And I, I, I had a, a hard time with a lot of the, uh, with, with a lot of the crystal stuff. Like there was just, it, it was, it, it's kitschy to me. But there, there's so much good stuff here, though. The crystal stuff is fascinating, and we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the crystals shortly. Uh, <laughs> okay. But yeah, changelings. The main theme of the game is changelings mm-hmm. bringing about the end of the world. Yeah. And from the beginning to the end is about the changelings, their threat, and the changeling conspiracy, the way the world hates them and fears them. Changelings, if you are unaware, are a base player race in the palladium fantasy game that's right one of your player character one of one option for player characters is the ability to at will look like anyone at any time at will i mean dnd makes this a, a spell you have to learn in palladium yeah. you can just play someone who does that all the time i like that they are bringing about the end of the world because when you, when you get right down to it Honesty and goodness is about truth and transparency and like being what you are, you know, if, if you are upfront with what you are, you can't be wrong with it. And a changeling, on the other hand, is, is literally anything that is, that is not that. And I, I, I like that. I like that being the villain. I, I also love changelings as player characters and I love the concepts of changeling heroes, but, um, one of the running themes in this game, or I'm sorry, in this book, but also all of the Palladium Fantasy role playing game is the the fear of changelings. Mm-hmm. This campaign really hammers that in, and ooh, ooh, like there are whole sections of the adventure where you have to deal with changeling inquisitions, and there are there are. <laughs> There are towns of it which are potentially ruled by changelings, but they're not. They're ruled by a scarecrow, which is yeah. a magical version of a changeling. It's 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 fascinating. The the who is really what they say they are is there from yeah. the very beginning of this campaign, and the theme is carried forward all the way through, even in the middle, where we deal with the crystals and the valley at the top of the world kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Even there. You don't know who's a changeling. Could it be the king of the valley? No, he's not a changeling, but he believes he is. There's, oh, then we have to go and figure out where uh, the, what, the Prestita kings, the old, some of the old kings from the old kingdom, were they or were yeah. they not changelings and, and stuff? It's super fascinating. If you take the blue pill, you can never go back. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, you could play this hack and slash, and you can also do this very, like, psychologically as an invest as an investigative. You you don't have to fight your way through this. You can think your way through this game. Yeah, you can think your way through a lot of it. There are some encounters which are clearly put there to be you know beat up with swords and, mm. and fists, but very few. A lot and of there's it is, also yeah. Yeah, there's also the little Palladium of Desires and the greater (laughs) Palladium of Desires. Okay, so... The Stables of Desire. (laughs) Now, before Reddit goes wild with that... (laughs) So, well, uh, if if you want to talk about some Stables of Desire, well, dear friends... No, uh, I'm not at work, look up (laughs) Clop Clop. Oh, stop I'm that. Sorry. <laughs> You're a bad person. <laughs> I apologize now. <laughs> clop, clop. <laughs> you will uh, hate me good, forever. You'll be scarred for life. <laughs> it's a good thing we don't make any money off this because we just lost it. <laughs> yeah. So the, the Palladium of Desires is a spin on the very first campaign that Kevin ever ran with this setting. Mm-hmm. In, uh, based around a place called the Palladium of Desires up far, I think, in the northwest of the continent. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, it it has also become kind of a a running Easter egg through some of their adventures. 
This one uses it twice. It creates the little palladium of desires in the first town you visit. Mm -hmm. And towards the end, in one of the later towns you visit, you find the ogre palladium, which is... Uh, it's the budget version. <laughs> Motel Six. <laughs> uh, it's more like the the sideshow in House of a Thousand Corpses. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's yeah, that's that's yeah. about right. But yeah, you've Palladium classic format. You've got places full of people where things are happening. Yeah. Insert adventurers to interact with the locals and encounter some of the uh, local color. I, I, I like all the right stuff. I really do. Yeah. Like it just tickles my, my punny bone. Yeah. Like uh, all the puns and it's like, it's punny, but it's not done like full fool's company, Robert Esprin style. Like, like in, in right way, everything, every shop on the way is, has right in it, but like meat right is run by Borg, the orc. And, you know, it's actually, an, uh, and it goes into the description, like, it's an honest place. You will get good meat for a good price, you know? And it's just, I, I, I like I like that they, they have this, like, neighborhood association going on here, you know? Yep. The trail right, the light right, the right arms, yeah. the right look, the, the locksmith is right, right around the corner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right for you. <laughs> it's just, oh, that's it's, good. it's so weird. <laughs> All right, let go of my arms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> those are the shops I mean. yeah, there's there's a lot of fun at the beginning yeah. of the adventure okay not to really go step by step through everything that happens here yeah the overview is that this adventure starts off in the old kingdom mountains so mm -hmm. if you are familiar with the palladium world at least through book two the old ones you're probably familiar with the concept of the old kingdom and the mountains near the Timaro Kingdom are the Old Kingdom Mountains. Mm -hmm. If you have followed any of the adventures so far that have been published, you have probably run through the Old Kingdom area. Therefore, this is super easy to insert into an existing campaign that has followed any of those adventures. Now, there's before like campaign like proper gets going, there's a, a like some minis. To just kind of get you going in the area or like to bring you up to speed, I suppose. Yeah, a handful of encounters, some possible lead-ins, some little places that you can go and do some fun stuff, some weird NPCs you might encounter on your journeys, mm -hmm. a dangerous vampire wizard from several thousand years ago on another planet that you might accidentally unleash upon the earth. You know, simple stuff. Yeah. You know, riffs. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get your first taste of, like, the overarching thing in the Titan's Cave. Yeah. Where it's just uh, you, the story of the Titan Castle and Crystal Mage. Mm -hmm. This is really where the overarching stuff kicks off. Yeah. Yeah, everything more or less leads towards an, toward a, an encounter in a cave of a Titan who you meet and who can guide you toward... Uh, the second location of the game, which is the valley at the top of the world. And That's here we such, have crystals. Yeah. <laughs> and, but honestly, I want to pause there yeah. and just say, that's a very uh, Elric -y, champion, eternal Michael Moorcock kind of name. And I really like it. Uh, the valley at the top of the world. It's just, it's, it's, it's a very evocative name. And I, I really enjoy that. That's, that's really good golden age. Fritz Lieber, Michael Moorcock, Haggerty, good naming, and I, I like it a lot. Oh, oh, definitely. Island at the edge of the world, valley at the mm -hmm. top of the world, the cover of the book, the yeah. tragic characters that are in the valley and all around. All of this is a very old school yeah. sword and sorcery style storytelling. Like yeah. Elric, I think it's, a, it's clearly an inspiration in the development mm -hmm. of this campaign. Like when you read about the history of what has happened thus far, yeah. the history of the valley, the the situation that everybody who lives in there is trapped in, the tragedy of the king, it's yeah. all very depressing. <laughs> and that's before you get to the rune blades. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay, so at the valley, we have another town, several towns actually. And mm -hmm government situations i don't want to spoil too much here but let's just say that there's a king and he's really into some hippie shit 
And by hippie yeah. shit, I mean crystal <laughs> magic. Which is not as hippie as you might think it is, because not only is it powerful, it's also dominating. Yeah. The crystal magic is all psionic and corrupt. So it's like psionic version of rune blades. Yeah. I don't know. I just the the the, the problem I've always had with psionics is that and this is in in most uh, settings and most systems is that the, it it takes heroics away from heroes. And I I just man it's 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 rough for me. I don't this is this is a personal flavor. I know I'm in the minority of saying it, but the the psionics are are not my jam. <sighs> I agree. <laughs> I've oh never been into psionics really. I find okay. Let's take a step back and talk about psionics and role playing games. Okay. I've my first experience with psionics in role playing games was Palladium. And I think Palladium actually did them well. First edition fantasy, mind mm-hmm. you. That was my first experience with them. I think Palladium did them well. Uh, you know, they had like, even in the first edition book, they had the inner strength points and you had some powers yeah. and you had to spend some points to use them. I love spell points. I thought it was a fantastic way of of being different than the magic in the books. Yeah. So... Then I got to experience psionics in advanced Dungeons and Dragons and fuck that was everything first. about that. Yeah. It was awful. Whoever wrote the psionic system of that should should be ashamed of themselves because it was never good. In in third edition, it was never good. Psionics, from my experience, I have never seen psionics in D D be actually fun for anyone other than the player of the psionicist. Who ruined the yeah. game for everybody else? Honestly, I that's a hundred percent it. And I started with uh, second ed, so that that's where it comes. And I I hate to say it because it shouldn't be that way, but honestly, my 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 dislike of it was so great in second ed that it it bled decades later <laughs> into looking at this and going, "Who psionist? No, I don't want to know about that." <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's how bad it was. I think that my favorite implementation of psionics is Shadowrun. Mm -hmm. Shadowrun, psionics aren't a thing. Psionics just has magic. I'm sorry, Shadowrun just has magic. Psionicists are wizards who have a psychological misunderstanding of the way magic works. Mm -hmm. And thus can only use magic in certain ways that they believe is mental power. But it's basically an insanity. It is a limitation that you put upon your character for extra skill points. Yeah. I love that. I like that too. Because it doesn't work any differently. A game master doesn't have to know any different systems. Mm -hmm. You know, it can't be abused. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's like espers, but it's still magic, you know? And I think that that's definitely the way to go. Mm Mm-hmm. So anyway, oh, sorry, I did, didn't, yeah. Palladium <laughs> has always had this thing where you make a character and you make a player character in a Palladium role-playing game, unless you pick a race that is barred from psionics, every character has a chance of having some psionic power. You yeah. don't even have to take a psionic character class. You can just have some psionic abilities. You can just have them. Yeah. I mean, they're kind of cool. Which, which means everyone, which is why someone can't run amok, is because everyone has a bit. And I think that's an incredibly balanced way to do it. I just, man, it was so bad. Like, it was just so bad. And it just, it poisoned the well probably forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. D&D, I think, ruined psionics. Like, most people that I know who, were, who played D&D, and played with or as a psionicist either loved their psionicist because they broke the game or hated psionics because the guy who played the psionicist broke the game broke the game yeah Yeah. 
<laughs> and that actually speaks to something too that it broke it so bad that decades later I'm still pissed about. It. I, yeah, I <laughs> you know? I can show you on the doll where the bad psionicist touched me. It that oh, no. I, it's still today in my 43rd year of life I can do that <laughs> because yeah. it, it scarred me so deeply playing psionics yeah. in D and D. Yeah. Okay, we let's move all away from the from the hate. <laughs> okay. So then there's the, the, then there's the German towns. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got all the towns in the top of the world. They're all interesting. There are there's thieves guilds. There's mm. factions. There's again, Palladium style. You have maps. You have points of interest on said maps. You have people that might have a paragraph given to them at a location, and that paragraph mm. is full of campaign seeds, all right there. Again, lifetime of adventure in one book. Yeah. And like now that I'm looking at it through the lens of your cousin, some great coloring <laughs> that that can honestly be done. Like there's some pretty pictures in here, some nice clean line art. Yeah, the Crystal Fortress, the Crystal King, Crystal, Crystal, yeah. Crystal, Crystal, Crystal. Okay, in short, Crystal. psionic crystal magic, <sighs> crystal technology was brand new. It was introduced in Island at the Edge of the World, and a lot of people wanted it, and they wanted psionics because it gave them mm. powers. And okay, anyway, let's move on. So. <laughs> Yeah, then then you have the uh, the the knockoff uh, roundtable with uh, Sir Not Modred uh, and Sir Not Bevedere and Sir Not like yeah, that's the roundtable, but at the Crystal Palace. Kevin clearly likes his Arthurian legend, you know, and that that's fine. But I or mean, there's, Thomas there's, Bertold does, I should say. There's, there's others. Uh, <laughs> and then we have pages upon pages dedicated to psionic crystal mm -hmm. magic. It's it's fascinating in that all of it has problems similar to rune weapons. Yeah, Palladium doesn't like giving characters extreme amounts of power with it unless those are balanced by uh, terrible drawbacks, and this is no exception. Yep. Also, in true Palladium style, they also like to do armor out of it whenever possible. <laughs> also, in true Palladium style, they like to try and insert at least one image from the mechanoids into every book yes page 104 <laughs> yeah <laughs> no i mean because why not this is one of the only pictures my cousin didn't color like seriously he colored the guy next to it but he didn't color the robot yeah well the robot clearly doesn't belong <laughs> true <laughs> I mean, just like uh, there's nothing around that day except for possibly the lost portal in dimensional travel. Yep. Like that's the only part of that that makes any sense, but like, it just, it doesn't belong. And then we've got more, more places to go and more little questings to do. Mm. And it talks about the quest that you can get from the tragic King of the Valley and all the different quests you can send you on. And it uh, dives back into the changelings after a bit mm -hmm. with some interesting, I think encounters with dead kings. I I really enjoy the conversation that is uh, shown there. That's pretty good stuff. Yeah, all the flavor text in this is honestly really good. Whenever yeah. they get into it, um, I like the the various kings. Uh, I like the the flonery flo flo flonery flonery. I think it is. Yeah, one twenty three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we finally make it to. The edge of the world and well i don't want to spoil it for you if you haven't experienced this but let's just say there's an edge of the world and it ain't good yeah yeah that's that's a great way to put it <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah uh in fact i should skip over most of the rest of this because this is all stuff that if they haven't played it they don't want to know about it um mm -hmm. yep yep there's let's just say that uh Again, it's epic. There's yeah. things happening at the edge of the world that involve changelings and global destruction, mm -hmm. uh, which by this point, your player characters should be epic level enough to at least maybe survive the tombs of Gersidi. So then you send them to the edge of the world to prepare them for the tombs of Gersidi. <laughs> um, this is, it's, I mean, it, this is a good book. And yeah. honestly, as... As a, a one book piece for a, a overarching campaign, again, years, 
years. And one of the lovely things I like about what Palladium does, and I think only Palladium does, is where your characters are liable to go quote and unquote off script, that's still worked out in detail. You're not fudging these things or running out and buying another book to find the information for two towns over. It's here. You will you will have what you need for when your people go about their their freaking business because they you know this is palladium they're they're not going they're not going in order module number to module number i i like that within this book the the whole area exists it's it's not just what's what is this campaign it is what is this part of the world and it's several parts of the world primarily yeah. it's the old kingdom mountains but then it leaps over a vast Literally. tract of space and takes you to the edge of the world yeah. beyond the oceans, beyond the seas, beyond all the known lands. Mm-hmm. There, in fact, uh, the islands are specifically mentioned in Adventures in the High Seas. Yeah. And NPCs there are mentioned in Adventures in the High Seas. So, <laughs> again... All of the stuff that has been published up to this point, all, we're in book six. Everything yeah. up to this point can be played as an epic, long-running campaign. Everything can be pieced together. If little seeds are placed here and there, and you can use the island of the edge of the world and the events in there as a backbone to that, to tie each of the things in these books together. Maybe not so the northern wilderness. It's a, kind of its own thing going on. But if you're doing any of the stuff with the high seas or any of the stuff in the ti- in or around the Timur Kingdom, the island at the edge of the world can connect all of it. Yeah. So let's talk for a brief moment, because we're, we're pretty much at the end of this book, about nostalgia and where we are as 40-year-old gamers. Let's say this is the conversation at the end of the book. The conversation at the end of the book okay. at the, in the High Valley. Yeah. <laughs> I like that, actually. <laughs> I like that a lot. To me, as an observer with a different experience than you, I have, up till close to this point, been taking your experience and your love of Palladium Fantasy as, a, a, not not completely, but with a bit of, a nostalgic lens enthusiasm. Like this is what you were first introduced to. Of course you love it. Right. Mm-hmm. Now that I've read through a lot, like I'm, I'm, I'm several, several books in now. I have to say that this is, this is a unique property. It's not riffs. It's not something that they got licensed. Like more thought has gone into this, uh, the balancing, the, the, the people's, how they interact, what is going on in every little portion of this world, more thought and more effort has gone into this than anything else. There is, are the ideas as big? No. Are the places as big? No. Is it richer? Yes. It is a fully fleshed world with so much going into it. And fuck, dude, I I think I get it. And I'm just kind of jealous that I didn't start here. You know, because I, I would I would love that if this was my start. And it's not, and that sucks, but I, I, I get it now and it's not it's not enthusiasm, dude. This is this is this is really good. And the best part, in my opinion, is that the richest details and the best seeds for adventure are not in the larger than life, fully fleshed out multi-page NPC histories. Mm-hmm. They are in the single paragraph locational descriptions, just a random little note about this yeah. disgruntled kobold blacksmith who has a problem with his boss and is considering aligning with dark forces to murder him in the night. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> just, wait, but, wait, but why? did you who? notice that, that, that he put, <laughs> A magic mark under yeah. the handle of every dagger he made, but all those daggers are going to this army. Fuck, but, <laughs> you know. And I mean, that's just a yeah. blip, and it's gone. It's blip. Flip yeah. the page. It's there's gone. a there's another blip. You know. Yeah, that so much. It's so rich. That's all you need. It actually, um, 
Okay, back in the day, now I want to say it was 1991, 1992, and 1993, TSR released trading cards of all of their properties. Yes. I have them all. They Each card just has a picture on the front of whatever it's mm-hmm. about. And on the back, it's got, uh, if, it's an in, if it's a PC or whatever, it's got this really quick smattering of stats and a paragraph description. Each one of those is rich. It's just a single mm. condensed paragraph of who this person is. And each bit of art is either something that they custom drew for it or some random person in a piece of D&D art from one of the books. Like, like dwarf number 17 from the cover of this thing or something. And they just wrote a right. story about this guy. It's the same kind of stuff. All you need is a seed, and those seeds become great, wonderful trees of adventure. I think the only danger in this is trying to find where to start, (laughs) because there's literally so much. I mean, it's it's where where do I start? Which of these pieces do I want to use? Like you know the uh, what is it? God, I I don't like the show. It was with Danny DeVito, fairly recent. Everyone always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. Everyone on it is a shithead. Everyone on it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that the guy with like the conspiracy wall, that's kind of how you, <laughs> you have to set it up. That that meme. It's like because there's yeah. literally so much that you're you're almost starved for a, a good choice. Yeah, dude, it, it's 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 really simple, dude. Palladium is is thinking man's DD. It just is. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know, I, I hate to put them down, fans of other games or D D specifically, but yeah. It's there's a, you have to think a lot more about the world. I feel you don't get led as easily, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And honestly, I don't mind. I'm done. They're they're trying to sell me Drizzt for the sixth fucking time, dude. Six six times. I'm not doing it. Yeah, I, I'm over the the double D's. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm, I'm not going there again. Not not on this. <laughs> yeah. My brain, I just was like, where am I taking this train of thought? No, you know what? I do, I don't. I don't want to take the yeah. train of thought anywhere. I'm going to get back yeah. to this book. Matthew, do you need this book? Um, fuck, it's, it's hard because I already have a lifetime of gaming in the other two books, but maybe I don't have a lot of time to like put all the disparate pieces together. Maybe I want an overarching piece that I can just after working all week to have a weekend game with my friends. Yeah. Yeah. I need this book. I think everybody needs this if they want to complete their Palladium collection. Um, yeah. I think that if you have listened to any of this show focusing on the fantasy series, then you know my opinion. I love first edition fantasy. Mm-hmm. Second ed just didn't quite do it for me. I love the simplicity of first ed, and I feel that the world in this era of the game is beautiful. So the first set of first ed books, I think, is crucial. I think that everybody who really wants to truly experience the Palladium world the way it was meant to be should get this book in their collection. That's an interesting topic we should probably talk about in its own show. The the, the purity of the original creation versus the the refinement is what is gained versus what is lost. We should talk about that someday. I like that. Let's do it. All right, folks. Well, thanks for tuning in. You, you know my opinion, um, and I'm, I'm coming rapidly to, to just love this system and this, this setting. The more I read about it, the more I've decided that it is, it is just, it's, it's a great setting. Yep. It's tits. It, it is, in <laughs> fact, the tits. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you. Yep. Thanks we'll for listening. Uh, join us on Discord. Drop by our various online stores and kick us a few a box. Or don't just say hello. We love talk. Yeah. We love to hear from people. Say hello yeah, on Twitter um, or Facebook or whatever. We'll have a conversation and talk about and if, gaming goodness. If you haven't seen them yet, you can uh, always leave us uh, a comment. We will read them out on the air, probably at least once a year, um, <laughs> and respond to them. We we actually we we do love um, hearing from you folks. We like hearing what you like, and we like hearing what you don't like. So yeah, give it to us. And if you have any suggestions for episodes, send them our way. We love those. All right. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Starships. Magic. 
mystic martial arts, romance. All of these can be found in A Cloak of Blades by Isaac Sher. You might have heard my name before. I've done a lot of voiceover work for Breakfast Puppies. And I've recently released my first novel. It's available on Amazon as an ebook and paperback. And you can get it for free if you have a Kindle Unlimited subscription. I do hope you'll support my work as you're supporting Breakfast Puppies. And it's been a pleasure talking with you today. Have a good one. You've been listening to The Glitter Boys, a Palladium Books fan podcast. Glitter Boys, Rifts, the Megaverse, and all other such topics are the property of Kevin Sambita and Palladium Books. Please buy all their stuff and help keep them in print and making more games. You can order directly at palladiumbooks.com, and their entire catalog is available digitally at DriveThruRPG as well. Our opening music is 8-Bit Bass and Lead by Furby Guy from freesound.org. This closing music is Caravana by Philip Gross, available at freemusicarchive.org. All sound effects used are self-made or acquired via Creative Commons Zero License. If you like what you have heard, find us on Twitter and Facebook as The Glitter Boys. That's B-O-I-S. And check us out online at breakfastpuppies.com slash glitterboys. And also join us on the Breakfast Puppies Network Discord at breakfastpuppies.com slash discord. And if you want to help us out, please spread the word and help us build a community. Thanks again for listening. We'll catch you next time.